Hello friends, I am Shushant Raghavan. Welcome to Technical and Quality Session. For understanding the technical requirements and quality standards in clothing industry, making a sustainable garment, I have good practical experience in the apparel manufacturing sector. My skills are CAD pattern making, sample development, technical requirements, and measuring quality performance. Today's session is about what is fabric grouping in garment manufacturing. For more sessions like this, do like and subscribe to my channel. Now let's begin the presentation. What is fabric grouping? Why fabric grouping is necessary? What is fabric grouping? In bulk garment production, RMG factories purchase fabrics in volume. Garment factories purchase finished fabrics as per style requirement. Total fabrics for an order style come in many rolls as each fabric roll can contain up to certain fabric length. Secondly, the wet processing of fabrics like dyeing and finishing are done batch wise as per machine capacity. As a result, there is a possibility of having shade variation between two different fabric batches, other fabric qualities, physical properties like fabric shrinkage, GSM and fabric width may vary batch to batch, roll to roll due to wet processing and weaving process. When you order bulk fabrics, you get fabrics in many rolls of various length in different shades, in different shrinkage level and different widths. For better utilization of fabric and cutting room performance, factory segregate fabrics and group them according to variable parameters. The process of segregating fabric rolls and grouping them based on similar fabric specifications and physical properties is known as fabric grouping. Grouping is done for maximizing fabric utilization and minimizing cutting time. Why fabric grouping is necessary? Below are a few reasons for grouping fabrics. To understand and assess fabric quality sourced from different suppliers. To know how many different groups or batches there are in the whole fabric lot. Cutting plan and marker plan can be done according to fabric grouping. To minimize fabric waste during the cutting process. To improve marker efficiency and reduce cutting time by order. To segregate and avoid shade variation in garments. When there is shrinkage variation between rolls, a factory can control it by knowing fabric shrinkage version and cutting fabric rolls separately. Thumb rules for fabric grouping. Here we are talking about the grouping of fabrics purchased for the same order. For making a style, you may need single type of fabric or maybe more than one type. Following are the primary parameters based on which fabric grouping is done. Group fabric by color and shade. As you know, a garment with different shade is not the first quality product, it is considered a defective garment if shade variation is found within a garment. Therefore, to avoid mixing of garment components of different shade, fabrics are segregated shade wise. Prepare blanket with the 8 into 8 inch swatch and write on the back side of the swatches the correct lot number, yards, roll number for identification. Shade band is prepared prior to cutting. Sometimes the shade of the fabric goes out of tolerance of color matching. In such cases, the factory needs to take approval from buyer whether all shade bands are okay for cutting. Buyer may reject fabric shade which falls out of tolerance. Group by fabric shrinkage. Fabric shrinkage cannot be avoided for all fabrics, especially knitted fabrics. If you cut fabric without considering the fabric shrinkage, garment measurement will be out of specs. If you know fabric shrinkage percentage of a fabric roll, you can add the shrinkage in the pattern for that style and cut the fabric accordingly. It will result in expected measurement after washing of the garments. You cannot add the same shrinkage to the pattern for all fabric roll as shrinkage may vary roll to roll. You need to check 100% shrinkage of all rolls and group the fabric shrinkage to make different shrinkage pattern version. If you preset fabric shrinkage and make 00 shrinkage, then no need of grouping for different fabric shrinkage version. Group fabric by fabric width. As mentioned above, you may receive fabric rolls of various widths for the same style. So the cuttable width of the fabrics will vary as well. If you cut fabrics of different cuttable widths in the same layer and prepare the marker as per minimum fabric width, you are wasting fabrics edge loss. You can utilize extra fabric in the width by creating a different marker for different fabric widths. This would give better fabric yield and reduce fabric consumption per garment. Reduce fabric waste and save fabrics. 
these thumb rules are good and can be applied to any size of garment factories but for this you may need additional manpower secondly you must know how to utilize the segregated and group rules if you cannot make a separate marker for separate groups there is no use of grouping a factory should not waste unnecessary time in grouping of fabric most cases there might be many possibilities of combination as you get varied with shades and shrinkages mainly it would be a difficult task for grouping it correctly and using the group fabrics for cutting when you will be in production pressure a cut plant software would be helpful for such a scenario thank you for watching for more sessions like this do like and subscribe to my channel please comment your valuable thoughts and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified when i post a new presentation bye have a good day